Stuart 7A model steam plant. This one is part 32. Fitting the water bypass and piping, packing the steam gland, setting up the pump and testing using compressed air. The first job is to make an adapter. This will secure the globe valve to the T-piece. I have a piece of brass hexagon in the chuck and first of all I trim the end of it to make it look something. Then I centre drill it and then follow through with the 9 30 seconds of an inch twist drill. This is tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. The next part of the job is to thread the hole and I'm doing this under power with the lathe in back gear so it runs slowly. A quick touch with the carbide tip tool removes the burr on the end and then it's time to part it off. The lathe is no longer in back gear so it's going a lot faster now. On a small lathe in the home workshop it's ok to part off brass at a high speed but with other metals you will have to use a slower spindle speed and use some lubricant. That's this job just about done, a very quick and simple job. The last part is to trim the end of the hexagon so it just looks a bit better. In this clip you can see what the hexagon adapter was for. I think I'm going to paint this adapter when I touch in the paintwork on the T-piece. Now it's time for a bit of piping. The first thing to do is to remove the burner and its pipe. Using 532nd or 4mm pipe I need to make a new inlet pipe to the check valve from the end of the T-piece. I've removed and discarded the old piece of pipe and this is a length of 4mm pipe that I'm going to bend to fit. After bending it and silver soldering the unions on the end, here it is. I needed to use an adapter union at the T-piece end because the union nuts on the T-piece are designed for 3 16 pipe. On the other end of the pipe is a standard quarter by 40 union. Over now to the very interesting underside of the water tank. Now it's fitted with three 90 degree elbows. The green one is the original and feeds the hand pump. The middle one is the main water outlet to feed the steam pump. And as you saw in the last episode, the third one is from the water bypass valve. Now I need to fit a piece of copper pipe to this elbow which needs to exactly follow the contours of the other pipe that feeds the pump. This is not as easy as it looks, and the best way to do it is to fasten it at one end, then just work your way down the pipe, matching the bends already on the other pipe. Here, using a felt tip pen, I've marked the point where I'm going to bend the pipe to connect it to the underside of the globe valve. When working with copper pipe near polished wood parts, it's always a good idea to clean up the ends of them on a belt sander or similar. Any sharp bits could scratch the wood. I'm currently making the pipe that goes from the outlet of the hand pump to the new check valve on the boiler. And instead of editing the process as I normally would do, I'm running the video at 800%, that's 8 times normal speed. So now you can see that I generally make things look easy by editing out the mistakes. Eventually I got this piece of pipe to the right shape, silver soldered some unions on the end, and here I am fitting it in place. My Barco spanner's a bit big for this, I should use another one. By the time I've found another spanner, this one will have done the job. I'll be glad when I can clear my bench, because at the moment there's too much on there, and I think the box of spanners is behind the traction engine I've been working on. The current pandemic lockdown status in the UK means that the owner can't pick up the traction engine until December at the earliest. Never mind, it's now time to fill up the water tank and see what happens. This aerial view of the plant shows the piping and it's fairly neat. I will be adjusting it slightly but it's looking okay. And the good news is the pump is working very well. Here it's just recirculating the water. It takes the water from the tank and pushes it back up this pipe and it comes out of the PM research elbow. When I close the water bypass valve the pump is now pumping the water into the boiler. Basically the pump is alright like this. The travel of the actual piston is not as good as I would like it to be, so because I am what I am, I'm going to mess about with it. I love working with little machines, and I do like the challenge of making them work as well as I can. With the water bypass valve closed, water is now starting to climb up the gauge. Not very fast, it's only a small pump, but it's perfect for a plant of this size. When I open the water bypass valve, as you can see, the stroke of the pump isn't all that even. I'm sure I can improve this. I need to tighten the water gland because from the pumping into the boiler operation, there are one or two water droplets. That's why this part is shaped the way it is. 
I think now is a good time to pack the gland on the steam cylinder because I did see it blowing. Now both of the stuffing glands are packed and neither of them are very tight. Just tight enough to stop steam leaking from one end and water from the other. I've always found the setting of these type of pumps to be a bit bizarre. You have two collars on the valve rod. By changing the position of these collars you can shorten or extend the stroke. Here is the pump pumping water against about 40 pounds per square inch of air in the boiler. The stroke of the pump can't really be that even when it's pumping water into the boiler because on the power stroke when it's moving from right to left the pump ram meets considerable resistance. Here as you can see when I open the water bypass valve just to let the water back to the tank the stroke is much more even. I've never made one of these pumps so I don't really have any instructions for setting it up. It just appears to be common sense. This pump is particularly good now because it doesn't leak and it doesn't need much air pressure to run. When I run the 7A steam engine at the same time, that seems to take most of the pressure, leaving not much for the pump, but still it's doing its best to pump water into the boiler. By this time I was rapidly going into my normal obsessive mode to find out why things are not doing what they're supposed to do and how I can put it right. When I first worked on one of these pumps I was fairly clueless, so I looked at some photographs on Google to see where the little collars were positioned on the valve rod. I think I'll have a play with the steam engine for a while. The engineering is to die for, the crankshaft is perfectly straight. I fitted the reversing gear, but that wasn't very difficult. And the owner of the engine made a fine job cleaning up the gunmetal eccentric parts. Time to turn the mystery part. What is this screw for? You don't have a screw like this on a southward pump. They only seem to be fitted to these small Stuart pumps. It's designed to limit the travel of the valve. But then the collars on the valve also limit the travel of the valve as it's driven by the piston rod. It seems to me there are four things to get right with the setting up of one of these engines. Not including packing the glands, that's just normal routine. By adjusting all these things and trying out different combinations and looking at more pictures on Google, you will find out that suddenly your pump starts to perform. And as you can see, the water level in the boiler is rising. Here, I'm just having a play to see what happens. And I recommend if you get one of these pumps, try it for yourself but do take a photograph of it first, so if you can't get back to how good it was before you started messing with it, you can reset it to the settings on the photograph. In this part, I've set the two collars closer together, and the piston rod isn't moving the full distance. But then, as I turn up the air pressure and adjust the screw at the end, it starts to move a lot better. Now, even though the pump is pumping under pressure, because it's pumping water into the boiler, look at the level on the water gauge. It's working a lot better and much more evenly. And even when I run the 7A at the same time, the pump continues to pump the water into the boiler very smoothly. The final episode will be the next one, which hopefully will be a successful steam test. In anticipation of that, I thought it would be a good idea to drain and refill the displacement lubricator ready for it. I drained some of the water out of the boiler because it was getting a bit too full, which means the pump is working fine. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.